I had a feeling that something was wrong with my wife Caroline. Not much, but enough for a man who knew her for twelve years, of which he was married to her for ten. Caroline and I have an ordinary Scandinavian family with two children, a seven-year-old boy and a five-year-old girl. We live in our own home near the county capital, and we both work full-time. Caroline at City Hall, and I work for a small consulting company. My wife and I met at an evening class learning advanced uses of Microsoft Excel and got married two years later. Of course, like most others, our marriage had its ups and downs, but there were never any serious problems, at least in my opinion. The first signs appeared about a month after our 10-year anniversary. This was her slight decrease in interest in sex. It's not that she refused me sex, but she started offering quickies instead of making love much more often than before. The next slight visible sign was an increase in her clothing expenses. Another sign was that she was increasingly nagging me for no real reason. Caroline always spent at least two evenings a week with her friends for various innocent activities such as aerobics, evening classes, bowling and badminton, but only a couple of late evenings a year with the girls in some bar or restaurant when someone from the gang wanted to celebrate something. I did my best but could not see any new or strange patterns in her evenings out. My co-worker Eric noticed that I was having problems with my marriage and told me that it was better to know the truth than to walk around feeling as bad as I did. I told him that a private investigator could probably find out the truth, but I could not hire a private investigator for two very simple reasons. Firstly, there was no such thing, at least in the phone book, neither in our city nor throughout the entire district. Secondly, even if there was one, I didn't have the money to follow Caroline for a long time, but I promised to do everything possible to end the problems between me and Caroline. The last straw that broke the poor camel's back happened on the first Saturday night after Eric suggested that I do something. Caroline and I were invited to a pleasant dinner given by friends just outside the city where she acted like a loving wife throughout the evening. She even did this all the way home in the taxi we shared with another couple. Of course, I had hopes of continuing the pleasant evening by making love to her. But as soon as the nanny left our house, Caroline stopped being so nice and cut me off with, Forget it, if you were stupid enough to expect anything from me tonight. I gave up trying and replied with a beaming smile. What could I expect from an icy, frigid bitch? Nothing more was said that evening but it took me several hours before I fell asleep. I used this time to come up with a simple plan. The only thing I had to do was sign up for an online anonymity service so I could send emails without being tracked. After testing the email service on Sunday morning, I sent Caroline the following email at her work on Monday. Dear Mrs. Ekman, to my great disappointment, I have now obtained evidence of your infidelity, which makes me feel sorry for your husband, and envious of your lover for his pleasures, with such a magnificent woman as you. Of course, I am very tempted to share my information with your husband, but I have a better offer because I want and need to have a good time with a gorgeous woman sponsored by you on my next business trip. So I expect you to be sitting, alone, in the Plaza Cafe today, Monday, at 14.30, with 600 euros in an envelope at the table. My friend, greetings you with the words, Aren't you Lars's sister? You must answer, No, I am his wife. After which, you must give him the envelope. Thank you for your very kind cooperation. Your true friend. 600 euros is a very insignificant amount that cannot be regarded as serious blackmail if she goes to the police, and they are unlikely to consider this as some kind of priority case to save the reputation of the cheating slut wife. On the other hand, it was small enough that Caroline could easily get it from an ATM. Both euros and our own Karunas are available at ATMs outside our bank's main office. That Monday, I suggested that Eric take a three-hour coffee break at the Plaza Cafe. We walked in a few minutes before three, and to my fake surprise, I saw Caroline sitting alone at a table, and then to my real surprise, I saw Martin Jensen sitting alone a few tables away. That bastard Martin also works at City Hall, and he's married to one of Caroline's best friends. We met him and his wife for dinner last Saturday. 
but I didn't notice anything special between him and Caroline. Staring at Caroline and Martin, I shouted loudly, What the hell is going on here? Why are you two here instead of working? Why don't you sit at the same table? Martin ran away without saying a word to me, and after him, Caroline silently left the cafe. Eric was even more confused than I was when I told him that we had probably caught Caroline with her lover. After this, I called Martin's wife, Cecilia, and asked her if she had any idea why my wife and her husband took the afternoon off and sat at separate tables in the cafe. I then told her that I suspected Caroline was having an affair, and now Martin would have to be the prime suspect, unless I got a very good explanation about what they were involved in. She promised to have a serious talk with Martin and to call me when she found out anything. This Martin was a very handsome man, usually expensively dressed, polite, well-mannered, and a real party animal. Of course, those of us who knew him from childhood had a very different opinion of him. At home, I logged into our bank account, where it was clear that 600 euros had been withdrawn and put back during the day. This information was enough for me for now, so I filled out the divorce forms I picked up at the courthouse during my lunch break. When Caroline returned home, she was as angry as a bee and attacked me. You acted like an idiot in the cafe. I can explain everything if you bother to listen to me. I answered, No, I don't want to listen because I don't care about your explanations. Just read these divorce papers and sign them. Everything is split 50-50 and you can't get a better deal, even with a lawyer who will cost you a fortune. It was clear that she was really very angry and shouted at me, these divorce papers are the only sensible thing you've been able to do in a long time. Seething with anger, she signed the divorce papers without reading them and shouted, It will be a great relief for me to get a real man instead of such a non-entity like you. This is how my marriage ended. Caroline left the house, and I didn't care where. Later, I received a sobbing call from Cecilia, who told me that Martin had admitted to having an affair with Caroline. Now he was crying and begging her to forgive him. She said she didn't know what to do and demanded that Martin move out and live with his parents for the next two weeks so she could have time to think about their future. I told her that Caroline and I had already signed divorce papers. One thing was for sure. If Caroline thought Martin was her new dream man, she might forget about it, but it wasn't my place to tell her so. After the phone call, I moved all of Caroline's clothes into the guest room which infuriated her when she returned home. I couldn't resist the temptation to tell her that I told Cecilia about what I saw at the Plaza Cafe. This information did not make her any happier. The next day, strange events happened. Returning home after work, Caroline surprised me by saying, Dear Lars, I am sorry and sorry for everything I said yesterday in my angry mood. I was stressed and said stupid things I didn't mean. Can you forgive me for this? You are and will always be my true love. No more grudges. We are adults, and we are expected to do our best to solve our problems. Please tear up those stupid divorce papers we signed yesterday in an angry mood, and I promise to be a much better loving wife, and I will explain everything about yesterday. I looked her straight in the eye as I said, The divorce papers are in court, and I already know everything about Martin and your affair. Last night, after you left, Martin confessed to cheating on Cecilia who called and told me that your real man was a crying weakling, begging for mercy, and claiming that you were a cheating whore who seduced him. He's not very suitable for a real man instead of me, is he? Caroline sobbed and asked breathlessly, Did Cecilia tell you about Martin and me? Yes, and that explains why our marriage has been a loveless marriage for the last time. I suspected your deception, but found no real evidence until Martin confessed to Cecilia. Caroline had a strange look on her face as she said, But how come you made me sign divorce papers hours before Cecilia told you about Martin's confession? I had enough last Saturday night, and during a few sleepless hours, I decided that divorce was my only possible solution. The decision to divorce was made many hours before that crying freak. Martin admitted to cheating on you. I'm sorry, and I wish I could undo everything I did to Martin. Can you give me a second chance and forgive me? No, because I will never understand how you can prefer this bastard Martin to me and dream of him as a real man. I will never forget how you humiliated me ever since I fell in love with him. 
but this pile of crap will be yours when Cecilia is done with him. You probably didn't know that all their inherited shares, savings, expensive house and cars are Cecilia's private property. The only thing Martin owns is a shit ton of debt from when he went bankrupt. Now Martin will lose his expensive Rolex and BMW if those toys impressed you. If you really love this whiny bastard, you will have to support him and his expensive habits. She answered, I made a terrible mistake, and I will never understand how I could have been so stupid as to be seduced and deceived by that slimy worm. I'd rather be alone for the rest of my life than have anything to do with him. City Hall gossip said Martin told Caroline to go to hell when she told him about the divorce papers she had signed and suggested they could be an official couple. This explains why she begged me to forgive her and call off the divorce the day after signing the divorce papers. Martin has been successfully avoiding me since he saw me in the cafe. Already on the second day after his confession, the doctor sent him to sick leave due to stress and physical problems. As I expected, Cecilia filed for divorce after a two-week break, and Martin never returned to his job at City Hall. After being on sick leave for several months, he left the city for a new job. She and Caroline never met or even spoke again. Caroline rented an apartment in a good area, but had to wait three months before she could move. We agreed that she would stay in our spare room until then, and that neither of us would start dating until our divorce was final. Even though there was a cold atmosphere in the house, the agreement worked better than expected. Then, about two months after we filed for divorce, something very unexpected happened to Caroline. On Saturday evening, she asked me if I could promise to keep an important secret about her economic affairs. I promised, and she said, You probably heard that someone in our city won the lottery jackpot. I'm a winner. The jackpot is equal to three million U.S. dollars. This is enough to solve all my problems. We're still married. That's why I have to ask you, do you want half of it? Congratulations. No, I don't demand or expect anything from you. My only suggestion is that you create funds for the children so they can study, buy cars and apartments when they grow up, and then support them when they get married. She looked at me and said, Are you sure you don't? You will require anything from me? Yes. When we lived together, only your love was enough for me. But I am sure that when Martin receives this information, he will be with you instantly, begging you to forgive him and be with you. He will never know because you are the only one who received this information from me, and you promise to remain silent. Although I have not kept my own promises to you, I am convinced that you are better than me and keep what you promise. Nothing more was said on the matter, and everything went on as usual, except that Caroline was out of town the following Thursday and Friday. On Saturday, she asked me if we could have dinner together because she had something to tell me. I agreed. Our children stayed overnight with one of their friends. The dinner was great, with my favorite food and excellent wine, so I began to expect some attempts to buy my love, and I was curious what the value of my love was in her opinion and how much she was willing to pay for it. During a delicious dessert, she said, I did exactly as you suggested and created funds for our children. I answered, You are a good mother, and these funds will be of great benefit to them when they grow up. Nothing more was said on the matter, and we continued our pleasant small talk about other daily matters. During coffee and cognac after the meal, when we were comfortably seated on the sofa in the living room, she said, I'm sorry that I was a stupid cheap slut who ruined our happy family by deceiving and humiliating the best man I ever knew. Today I cannot understand how and why I could have succumbed to Martin's advances and seduction. I fucking regret it and have spent many sleepless nights crying about how fucking stupid I was. Of course, I know for sure that money can't buy you love and forgiveness. However, we know that courts usually order the offender to pay money to his victim as compensation for the pain and humiliation caused. But since no court in this country cared about what I did to you, I dealt with the matter myself. I acted both as a prosecutor and as a judge, who ruled that all lottery money remaining, after collecting funds for our children, would be transferred to your personal account. What I have done cannot be undone. She gave me the bank receipts and I was silent for a long time before I said, Dear God, what have you done? I can't take your money. I'll give it back to you. She answered, 
you don't have to give me anything back. The lawyers who organized this said that it was impossible because there were no conditions. The money is yours and only yours, and I cannot and do not want to regret what I did with it. I don't demand or expect anything in return. I did what I would have done before I got caught in this stupid scam. What the hell could I do? My love was not for sale, but Caroline did not try to buy it. There are no conditions at all. There were no requests for forgiveness. She only talked about compensation. She didn't even try to kiss me. Although I was in some shock, I began to realize that her love for me was real. Caroline was a smart, beautiful woman and the mother of my children. I suspected beyond any doubt that she was still in love with me. Will I ever find a better woman than her? Most likely not. Find at least one woman equal to her? Not even that. Will I be able to forgive her? I didn't know, but why not give it a serious try? I decided to do it. I said, Dear Caroline, we are still married, and we must talk to each other, talk about the past, and talk about the future. I think talking about the future is better suited after this delicious dinner, isn't it? She answered. Yes. I continued. Divorce hurts like hell, and it hurts even more now that I've realized how much you really love me and how much you regret your affair. She cried and sobbed. I pray every night that one day you will forgive me and give me a second chance. I moved closer to Caroline, hugged her, and said, We're still married. Should we seriously try to stay that way? She looked me straight in the eyes and whispered, Am I dreaming or is it true? It's true, because I hope that you are still my Caroline as you were before Martin tainted her. I fucking miss this, Caroline. She hugged me tightly and whispered, You will never regret this. There was only one way this evening could end, glorious, intense lovemaking. Over the course of that night, I did everything I could to give her the best sex she had ever had, and she did the same to me. It was like a wedding night again. And for a long time after that night, we acted like newlyweds. We skipped the divorce. Everything was fine in our relationship, and now we are a happy family again. Our children demanded that Caroline and I promise that we would never try to get a divorce again. We didn't talk much about Caroline's affair with Martin. For some reason, I don't really care about any of the details. Even though she gave me all her money, I never felt like she bought me back because she didn't have any conditions, just a faint hope. She put everything she had on the line, won what she wanted, and only the future will tell her if she did the right thing. The truth is that I missed her so much that I probably would have done something myself to get her back without any money. One thing is for sure, I love Caroline and she loves me. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.